So we'll begin with an opening prayer. We praise you, God, for the long labor of study that has made this day possible for our graduates and students. The study, the degrees, the achievements are yours to bless, yours to complete, yours to enrich, yours to multiply. As they journey with you into further study and ministry throughout the world, give them courage to orient themselves by the life and work of your son. Send your spirit to wrap them in your love and protection and empower them for ministry that reaches beyond the boundaries of race, gender, religion, mental and physical ability, and any life story boundless. We ask this, O oh God, because we know you are the one who is able to take their gifts and achievements, indeed their very lives, and weave them together as the threads and swatches and patterns of the cloak of many colors that adorns your church. May they wear it to dignify and honor your name throughout the world. Amen. A scripture reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus to the glory and praise of God. As we move uh, to our honors or awards, um, we always want to preface a good word about all Emmanuel Christian Seminary students. We recognize fine and, un and outstanding work being done by all of our students. And we know that students sharpen students. So everyone has a hand in what we can do and accomplish together in our learning. In the midst of that constellation, some students find a passion and a challenge that leads them to stand apart a bit. And we want to recognize and celebrate that today. So I will call upon uh, Dr. Jason Bembry to lead us off in our award presentations this morning. Each award will be given in succession. So feel free to clap electronically or chat congratulations. Dr. Bembry. Okay, um, good morning to everyone. The Randy and Gigi Huffines Award for Excellence in Biblical Studies is a generous gift to the Emmanuel uh, community from Dr. Randy and Gigi Huffines from Johnson City. Dr. Huffines is a dentist here in the Tri-Cities and is also a graduate of Lipscomb University, the Stone Campbell School associated with the acapella tradition in Nashville. It should be said that the Huffines are involved in a number of humanitarian efforts worldwide and their generous uh, generosity extends far beyond our nation's borders. We're blessed to have them as friends of Emmanuel and we're grateful for them, uh, to them for this award that is given each year to the students who have demonstrated the highest level of commitment to learning in both Old Testament and New Testament. I have the privilege of uh, presenting this year's recipient in Old Testament and Dr. Ransaran will present the, the award to the recipient in New Testament. The award for Old Testament consists of a number of books and a certificate stipulating the award. This student has done exceptional work in Old Testament this year. She took intermediate Hebrew with me in the fall, writing a very fine paper on the death of Uzzah in 2 Samuel 6 and has served as one of the Hebrew tutors and Dr. Dean's teaching assistant. 
She brings a wealth of insight and a determined work ethic to everything she does, and it shows in each class period. She is a delight to have in class. Please join me in congratulating this year's recipient of the Randy and Gigi Huffines Award for Excellence in Biblical Studies and Old Testament, Ms. Amber Donovan. In parallel to the Old Testament Award, a Randy and Gigi Huffines Award of Excellence in New Testament is given annually. This year's award winner was chosen by a committee of six as instruction in New Testament has been shared around the last few years. Our selected student has done well in biblical backgrounds and contexts in the Greek language itself and has showed improvement and strength and ex exegetical skill and is currently using his good skills in wrestling with some of the aspects of theology uh, in the New Testament as a whole. This year's award is uh, the four volume InterVarsity uh, uh, dictionary set, uh, backgrounds, the Gospels, uh, Jesus and the Gospels, Paul, and later uh, developments. Um, and uh, congratulate, congratulations then uh, go to Joe Schlarsky uh, for this year's uh, recipient. And we want to, to, to congratulate together Joe in this fine achievement. Our next award is in the area of theology and I think Dr. Ololia will lead us out. Janet Wickens generously finds the annual, funds the annual award, annual Fred Thompson Award for Excellence in Christian Theology, which includes a check of $100. Janet is the daughter of Dr. Fred Thompson, Professor Emeritus and former president of Emmanuel, and the award is given in tribute to his dedication to the study of theology. The award in Christian theology acknowledges students who have demonstrated excellence in coursework in theology, excellence in theological writing, and excellence in contributions to theological conversation and learning among their peers. Now that Dr. Perkins will uh, announce uh, this year's uh, award winner. Our award goes to a student who has shown exceptional ability and promise across all areas of study and especially the area of theology. Last year, she wrote an outstanding Christology paper on Jesus in Sufism. She has written just as eloquently on the theology of building a desk with her father. She has lectured and led discussions in introductory theology courses. She has coached first-year peers on crafting prayers for chapel, and she is always gracious in every conversation, especially the hardest ones. We are pleased to give the 2020 Fred Thompson Award for Excellence in Theology to Katie Rochelle. Dr. Blowers is up next. I'm uh, <clears throat> pleased to give the Walker Richardson Award in church history. Dr. Uh, Walker, of course, was the founding president of Emmanuel. Um, and Dr. Bill Richardson was for many years professor of church history. Both of them taught church history here. Uh, both of them left a tremendous legacy. And um, I'm pleased to um, award this to uh, Tyler Cohen, who uh, has demonstrated extraordinary abilities in historical research. Um, consistently, Tyler in his papers has gone the, the extra mile in uh, exploring all sorts of primary and secondary texts and um, very, very impressive in that respect. And I uh, think he has certainly earned this award. So congratulations to Tyler, who will receive uh, a copy of the Oxford Illustrated History of Christianity. 
So congratulations, Tyler. It's my honor to give the Larry and Marion Hostetler Award for Worship Arts. The Worship Arts Award is sponsored by the generous donation of Drs. Marion and Larry Hostetler of Scottsdale, Arizona. The Hostetlers have a deep love for music, fine arts, and for nourishing the church's worship by means of artistic media. In recognition of their passion for worship arts, each year we present a cash award of $150 to a student who has displayed not only outstanding outstanding artistic ability while in seminary, but has also used those gifts to bless and uplift the worshiping community here at Emmanuel, in chapel, and uh, in other worship settings. The student receiving this award today, uh, today came uh, to Emmanuel with a pretty narrow focus. All he wanted to do was be a music minister, and he has often blessed this community with his worship leading skills. He has also been a leader in the worship ministry of the First Christian Church from the time he arrived. I've had another number of conversations with him about ministry, and I've been deeply impressed, um, not just with his talent, but also with his heart, his self-awareness, and his growing maturity as a leader. But I think what has impressed me the most is the way that he didn't stay locked into that narrow focus, that he's opened himself to the rich variety of possibilities for ministry beyond just music. And so he has not he has become not just a musician, but also a minister. His actions and attitude reflect what we at Emmanuel value as the deep connection between worship and learning. This year's uh, Hostetler Worship Arts Award recipient is Isaac Williams. The Joseph Dampier Award in uh, Christian Ministries is named for Dr. Dampier, who, as many of you know, was a key figure in the establishment and development of the seminary. Um, he, in fact, was our first dean. He was also known as the consummate minister, exhibiting both skill in and passion for the daily care of the church. I remember Fred Thompson telling me once that uh, Joe Dampier was the the only real genius he had ever met in his life, no matter what issue you came up with in ministry, he had the perfect story uh, to help you get to the heart of it. And this award in his name is given annually to uh, students who embody that genuine heart for ministry and have demonstrated an attitude and action, a deep love for the church and high potential for effectiveness in ministry during their career at Emmanuel. Uh, the award this year has been split between two people of a cash gift of $75 each. So this year's recipients of the Christian ministry for the Christian ministry area of the uh, Joseph Dampier Award are Olivia Albrecht for her great work with children at Crossroads Christian Church and Steve Moore for his steadfastness in working at uh, Downtown Christian Church. <laughs> My privilege to give the Dennis Helsebeck Senior Award for Excellence in Christian Care and Counseling. This award is named in honor of Dr. Dennis Helsebeck Senior, who passed away in 2013. Dr. Helsebeck was the first pastoral counseling professor at Emmanuel. And all who knew him would agree that he embodied the essence of, of this award, which recognizes a student who consistently demonstrates an exceptional spirit of wisdom and of integrity in her or his personal life, while also offering an exemplary, exemplary level of empathy, guidance, and compassionate care in ministry to others. And I think that this year's uh, recipient definitely embodies both of those things. I hear so many times people talking about um, what a great encouragement she's been or how she's always there to listen to you. So it's really my privilege to give the 
Excellence in Pastoral Care and Counseling Award to Katie Rochelle this year. Uh, next is the Matarov Award for Excellence in Semitic Studies, which is given by the editors of the journal Matarov, which is dedicated to the research in Northwest Semitic languages and literature. This award is given each year to an Emanuel student in recognition for outstanding achievement in Hebrew and the other Semitic languages that are taught here at Emanuel. In addition to the certificate, the winner is given a check for $100 and a copy of this year's journal. This year's winner has demonstrated real growth in the past few years and has continued on that same trajectory this year. Taking intermediate Hebrew with me this past fall and taking the Deuteronomistic history class uh, with me uh, now in this semester. So please join me in congratulating this year's recipient of the Ma'arav Award for Excellence in Semitic Studies, Mr. Josh Bush. Congratulations, Josh. This one not legally binding until signed, but it will be at a later date. I'm glad to also represent the International Society of Theta Phi this morning. Theta Phi is an honor society for theological students, for scholars in the field of religion, and for outstanding religious leaders. It was founded in 1933 to encourage scholarship and to foster intellectual and ethical standards of the highest quality among religious leaders. Emmanuel's chapter was chartered in 1972. Membership in Theta Phi is by invitation only, and membership is selected from among students who have excelled in scholarship and character, from academically qualified scholars in the field of religion, <clears throat> or from individuals who have distinguished themselves by their service in the church. This year, the Emmanuel chapter of Theta Phi is pleased to welcome five individuals into our charter for membership. Those five students are Jennifer Smith, John Jones, Josh Bush, Janet Galante, and Kevin Carr. One of the functions of the Theta Phi chapter at Emmanuel is the funding of an annual scholarship that is awarded to a current Emmanuel student who has excelled in academic achievement. This morning, we want to recognize two students with a scholarship of $500 each that will be placed into their account. I'm really pleased to announce the Theta Phi Scholarship awardee, Janet Galante. Hey, Janet. And our second scholarship goes to Kevin Carr. Congratulations to them both. I think since we were mostly muted during that, we should uh, as many people unmute as possible and, and uh, clap for all our awardees uh, at this time.
Excellent. We transition now from uh, the awards uh, section to our blessing uh, of the graduates uh, service. I will read a blessing, uh, then proceed to name each of our 2020 graduates, and then following, we will have three scripture readings, two prayers, and a benediction. It is not hard to speak well of Emmanuel graduates. You are the ones who have learned to question the structures of the world around you, the shape of the relationships around you, and ask, is there good news here? If not, how can we put it in place? If there is good news, how can we celebrate it and continue it in it to the glory of God? And you have found good news in the pattern of Christ's faithfulness that you practice in your discipleship. You have looked back to know that the good news must bring forth the justice exemplified by Israel's prophets of old. You have searched the history of the previous people of God and found good news wanting at times and good news restored at other times and good news present in our own times. And you have found a depth of theological education and thinking that now propels you to push the good news out ahead of you as you lead others with well-honed ministerial skills in responding to the presence and the movement of God. You have become attentive to the spirit of God and can, and can discern where, God, where our God is out ahead of us, guiding us into an open future marked by good news. We counted a privilege to have taught you. We counted a privilege to have known you, to have spent time with you. We counted a privilege to send you out with diploma in hand to serve with love a needy and desperate world. You have studied well. You have put your whole selves into preparation. You have managed family and friends and service to the church as you moved through your program. And the whole time Jesus has walked beside you and God has supplied power to you through the Holy Spirit. Don't forget that because God through Jesus will never forget you. The Spirit will always stand by your side and you will be effective in a variety of ministries suitable to your gifts. So blessings on you. We rejoice with you. We rejoice with, we rejoice with God because of you. The May 2020 graduates of Emmanuel Christian Seminary. Olivia Albrecht. Master of Divinity with a Concentration in Christian Ministries. Kelly Allen, with a Master of Divinity with a Concentration in Theology. Nathan Kacharis, with a Master of Divinity. Stephen Collins, with a Master of Divinity with a concentration in Christian Ministries. Matthew Eden, with a Master of, with Div of Divinity with a Concentration in Christian Ministries. John Jones, with a Master of Divinity. Matthew Korf, with a Master of Divinity in Christian Care and Counseling. Ed Kostelnik with a Master of Divinity. Rebecca Miller with a Master of Divinity.
Justin Miller, with a Master of Divinity in Christian Care and Counseling. Stephen Moore, with a Master of Divinity with a concentration in Historical Theology. M. Colby Pinkston, with a Master of Divinity in Old Testament. Catherine Rochelle, with a Master of Divinity in, uh, with a concentration in Christian ministries. Matthew Shears, with a Master of Divinity with a concentration in historical theology. Adam Tomlinson, with a Master of Divinity. Isaac Williams, with a Master of Divinity with concentration in theology. Naim Tang, with a Master of Arts and Religion with a concentration in New Testament. Nine ten. Sarah Bowman Llewellyn with a Master of Arts in Religion with a concentration in theology. Nicholas Duffel with a Master of Arts in Christian uh, Ministries. Philip Linkus with a Master of Arts in Christian Ministries. Jesse Baca with a Master of Arts in Christian Ministries. John Joseph Wade with a Master of, Art in, of Arts in Christian Ministries. Don Watson with a Master of Arts in Christian Ministries. Trevor Went with a Master of Arts in Christian Ministries. Alex Wong with a Master of Arts in Christian Ministries. Michael Cummings with a Doctor of Ministry. Valdeci de Silva with a Doctor of Ministry. Rich Teske with a Doctor of Ministry. And that concludes uh, the reading of our 2020 uh, graduates. If uh, our hosts want to unmute everybody again. Woo! Well done, everybody. Well done. Oh, to all be fast enough. Oh, hey. Go. Terrific. See Valdez. That's right. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Bye. 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 Yes. That's a good one. Yeah. Oh. That's a good one. Old dudes. Uh, 
Dan? Okay, are we ready for the scripture readings? Yeah, I think so. Um, do you want to uh, mute everybody again, Adam, or maybe? Okay. So a scripture reading from Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 to 25. Thus says the Lord, do not let the wise boast in their wisdom. Do not, do not let the mighty boast in their might. Do not let the wealthy boast in their wealth. But let those who boast, boast in this, that they understand and know me, that I am the Lord. I act with steadfast love, justice, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. A reading from the book of Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. A reading from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience. As night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan and to flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. God has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of God's own purpose and grace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, let's pray. <clears throat> In the midst of an increasingly complex, diverse, and morally challenging world, we are called to a sustained practice of personal and shared discernment. Together we pray for the heart and will to enter into discernment in order to be a more faithful presence in the life of the wider, wider world. God, our loving creator, you create a spirit who, more with, who move within us, among us, beneath us, and beyond us. You who gather us in this new threshold time in your holy history, when we know we are complicit in the degradation of both soils and souls, you still invite us, call us again and again 
to be your people, whole and holy, to live in alignment with your deep creative joy. We are called again and again to your truth, called again and again to your justice, called again and again to your more abundant life. We, so called, are given no obvious paths, only the way, the practice of discernment in this complex, suffering, and wonderful world. So we pray for the will to, to claim, pause, and the art of presence in a busy and distracted world. We pray for the capacity to recognize shared silence as an act of interdependence in a society fractured by all kinds of problems, including COVID-19. We pray for the stealing of, your, of our spirits to wait on you. We pray for our graduates and also our students who are going to return, that you will bless them with your gifts to have seeing, seeing hearts, listening souls, informed minds, and the grace, the gift of, 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 of yours in sight. We pray for the courage to respond to your calling because we long at the deep core of our souls to become again and again a more faithful people. Amen. You continue praying with me. We thank you, God, for these students that have just had their names read as graduates. Thank you for their good work and their good friendship. We pray that now as they leave us, that you will guide them. May they always seek to minister from the very best parts of themselves. As they begin this new journey of their lives and of their ministry, in whatever form that may take, our prayer is that their stories will be full of, of many pages of great mercy and grace. In seasons or even days of difficulty and heartache, we pray that they will also find ways to laugh, to know peace and joy, and to practice good self-care. May they each be known as good teachers and great preachers and good listeners. May each be known also as wise counselors, inspiring leaders, and even greater models of integrity and humility. We pray, O oh God, that you will cover them in holy friendships that always point to you. May they have friendships that encourage them, that bring out the best in them, and that are willing to speak truth into their lives. And even though the day when they will leave our community with their diploma in hand, is here, may they always be reminded that even though that day has arrived, they have not, and we never arrive. And so may our journey ahead continue to be a journey of learning, of fresh challenges, and of the constant reminder that our competence comes as a gift from you. Bless these good friends. May they go from us in the peace and love of God. Amen. And now a final benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. I bless you, our graduating students, for the work you have done, for, the, for your perseverance and discipline, and for the promise of ministry that lies ahead of you. May God, through the Holy Spirit, confirm to your spirits that you are God's beloved daughters and sons. May you serve the church and the world, not out of your own neediness, but out of an overflow of joy and confidence in your identity as God's beloved. May God give you places to serve. We do not ask that they be easy or always smooth, or that you always enjoy success as the world counts success, but may they be places where your deep gladness meets the world deep need, world's deep need. May God give you mentors along the way, and also friends with whom you can laugh and cry, 
who can share and support you in the unique joys and challenges of ministry. And may God confirm you in your calling, giving you a deep sense of the eternal importance of the work that you will do. Amen. Our final word is always um, hearing from uh, the, the, the charge from the words of Apostle, the Apostle Paul given by our Dean. But before we have that, um, we're going to open it up for a minute for announcements, if there's anything that needs to be announced, and then um, any announcements or final word that Dean Ramsaran has, and then um, a final charge from the words of Paul. So any announcements? The celebrations are going to continue um, next Friday. We're going to have um, our end of the year banquet. It's going to be virtual. Uh, I'll put some links in the comment box for you to RSVP if you haven't yet. Okay, then I will leave you with the words of the Apostle Paul. You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, to be known and read by all. And you show that you are a letter of Christ, prepared by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ towards God, and let it be so. Thank you, everybody. Amen. On the count of three, let's give, every, give each other a wave. One, two, three. Yeah. And um, I have one word. Okay. Uh, you know, in, a, in, in African culture, a celeb uh, an, e uh, an event like this ends with a celebration. Usually the drum is at the center. So I'm going to beat that drum for our, in honor of our graduates. And everybody else would like to dance, stand up and dance. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to you all. Congratulations. 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 Congratulations.